we are aware that a constitution committee was set up under influence of british rule particularly britishers wanted to withdraw from india and they wanted to make as many as pieces of india and for their purpose they started playing with us and a cabinet mission plan that was one of the plan uh, set forward according to that constitution committee was set up they started their function with uh, 389 members they representing provinces uh, out of that provinces were having 292 seats states that means princely states they were having 93 states uh, sorry 93 seats chief commissioners provinces they were having 3 and baluchistan that is called as actually british baluchistan because part of baluchistan is still there in iran so whatever baluchistan conquered by britishers that is called as british baluchistan a fantastic land is there so for that purpose one seat was kept and uh, after that their first meeting only uh, there was a dispute and finally that dispute tentatively resolved by partition of india we got freedom but uh, not 100% freedom two third of india nearly that got freedom one third of india is under yet not under direct indian control uh, because it is called as pakistan so uh, obviously the member of uh, constituent committee that was also reduced so a number of constituent committee member that was also reduced so from 389 it was reduced to 299 because whatever the region that land that went in pakistan keep in mind today if you observe map you will get only pakistan but at that time it was east pakistan and west pakistan east pakistan today is called as bangladesh so uh, that seats get reduced now uh, how constitution committee work that they were having committees so total 22 sub committees were there and they studied out different constitutions and start working on that and finally the reports were generated by these committees so keep in mind out of 299 members not all were present but uh, committees were formed they were having 22 committees and on that basis of report there was a committee that is called as drafting committee so that drafting committee on that report started making the draft of constitution dr baba saheb ambedkar the great and the most learned man at that time uh, he was chairperson of this chairman of this drafting committee other members they are n gopal swami ayyangar alladi krishna swami ayyar k m munshi mohammad sadullah b l mitter but he was replaced by n madhav rao uh, because uh, the b l mitter he was having some health issues and so he resigned dr d p khaitan uh, unfortunately he died in 1948 and was replaced by t t krishnamachari so like that there was a uh, drafting committee this drafting committee now uh, uh, made first draft that is actually uh, we can say for public it was made uh, in january to uh, sorry january 1948 the draft was published and people were given 8 months to discuss the draft and propose amendments so this way we can say the rights of drafting committee or rights of constitution committee was directly taken out from public they say that we are sovereign body because the draft was produced and it was placed in front of public to give their opinion and like that uh, public was also active at that time so uh, and without internet and without uh, modern connectivity yet they publish and all uh, 7635 amendments were tabled out out of which 2473 were discussed and disposed all right 
remaining uh, the draft was discussed by people the press the provincial assemblies and the constituent assembly in the light of suggestions received the same finally adopted on 26 november 1949 so from january 48 to uh, november 49 this was all uh, the press of uh, process where drafting committee uh, sorry constitution committee was dealing with public and then uh, it was signed by the president of assembly now other members of assembly uh, signed that on 24 january 1950 and uh, then finally it was adopted on 26 january 1950 you may ask question why 26 january only so uh, you are aware our great first prime minister that is uh, pandit jawahar lal nehru he was having fantastic affinity towards certain dates try to recollect his speech that we can call as maiden speech because at time of freedom of india uh, it was a nice opportunity a unique opportunity for him to give such a speech so he says that long ago we were having some commitment with destiny and that we are going to fulfill so try to recollect in 1930 Uh, sorry 29 december 1929 there was session of congress uh, pandit jawahar lal nehru at that time he was very young he was prime uh, at that time president of this congress session and he said that henceforth we have to consider ourselves as free say so his father pandit motilal nehru in nehru report demanded dominion status whereas now son was demanding total independence pura swaraj like that words were used and we decided we means at that time nehru he decided that 26 january why i don't know but 26 january should be considered as independence day of india and so 26 jan 1930 should be considered as independence and from that date we have to consider ourselves as free like that he declared uh, in december 29 but uh, we are aware that we uh, were not getting freedom in that early days but in 1947 britishers declared actually in 1946 only that before 1948 some date was given uh, june or july 48 we are leaving india but uh, quite early that on 15th august only they left india uh, 47 and therefore Uh, we got independence we are considering as 15th august 1947 but uh, then that date was associated with some indian relation and so he decided that this date should be 26 january so india will become now republic keep in mind till here that means first britishers were ruling uh, provincial government were set up but yet central government was clearly in hand of viceroy but at uh, 15th august 1947 the incident was there that is the freedom of india then the charge was taken by pro, uh, that is called as provisional government okay interim government we are calling that government as interim government so actually we are aware constitution committee was working on basis of that and after this 26 jan 1950 we got constitution that is indian constitution and then elections were conducted on basis of that constitution and from 1952 first publicly elected government directly elected by public like that government was formed now uh, we have to discuss certain things that is when we are making constitution what are the objectives of our constitution here i want to just uh, guide you something different don't consider the situation as on today when constitution was prepared just try to go in that time for century or more than that century 
Britishers were ruling over India. No Indian ruler directly was capable of ruling at that time. Okay, so all these princely state, Raja, Maharaja, whatever the title of that person, but they were working under guidance, governance, or domination of Britishers. Neither of Indian ruler was having experience of ruling directly. They were ruling under guidance of Britishers. Say, so just try to recollect when we are able to. Uh, ride on bicycle, first time, try to recollect. Initially, we required support that somebody is holding bicycle and we are uh, riding over it. Some guidance is required. Slowly, slowly, that is removed. That same case is there in case of satellite launch also. Now you might have observed that uh, clamps were removed and all that. And then satellite is set free. But yet, satellite is not immediately free. It is under capsule. So all thermal layers, that thermosphere, exosphere, all that crossing out and then capsule is open out and then satellite is removed, uh, taken out. This way something was required here. A person at that time was not any single person was having ruling experience. Rather than that, we were having something like a dream that we are getting freedom. Say. Uh, just uh, discuss about uh, Lokmanya Tilak, what he was saying, Swaraj is my birthright. Like that he was declaring at that time, his dream was there to get Swaraj, that is uh, freedom. But unfortunately he died because uh, before freedom. Many freedom fighters, may they arm revolutionaries or may they were protestant satyagrahis like uh, Babu Genu. So all these people were having dream of independent India and that independent India is now under our observation. We are getting this independent India and we have, now it is as good as we can consider that uh, you have a fantastic clay in your hand and now you want to shape it, whether you are going to shape a god or we are going to shape a devil that is in your hand. So like that, uh, raw material was there in our hand. And now, at that situation, constitution uh, was prepared. So obviously, they were under control of Britishers constantly. And we want to get rid of Britishers. And therefore, you can check out the first objective of constitution, that to resolve to proclaim India as an independent sovereign republic. Getting idea? So when a person is saying that you should not speak lie, that means there are people those who are speaking lie. So same thing, when we proclaim that resolve to proclaim India as an independent sovereign republic, that means here we have to uh, assume that yes, earlier days we were ruled by Britishers. And now we are not ruled by Britishers, we are independent. The Republic world is most important world over here that we want to establish now people's rule. It is not something like kingship, monarchy or something like that. Because many people were having dream. Say uh, for example, uh, Mughal Sultanate we had to re-establish and like that dreams were there in some people's mind. So uh, this is not anybody, uh, we can say monarchy. It is rather, we are saying that it is a republic. Second objective of constitution, to establish a democratic union with an equal level of self-government to a government for all the constituent parts. Now, democratic union, union means what here? Because uh, Britishers, when left India, at that time, more than 500 princely states were there. Every state was having some different agreement with Britishers. Say for example, a princely state, uh, Jammu Kashmir, separate agreement. Nepal, separate agreement. And like that, they were having separate things with each and everybody. And therefore, we had to form a union. Hmm? And 
uh, with an equal level of self government for all the constituent parts now all power a third objective all power and authority of the union government and governments of the constituent parts are derived from the people so here we can consider this way that uh, no doubt the representatives were there in constitution committee but the representation as we discussed in earlier lecture also it was not on basis of adult franchisee but after making of constitution uh, i can give you another example if you are visiting any restaurant you are not part of cook you are not going inside the kitchen and guiding cook to do this and do that but after something is ready you can express your opinion yes this is very hot or this is very mild something like that so like that the experts were elected and those experts they produce they prepare their constitution and now ready constitution or rather i should say a draft it was sent in public and public opined about that and therefore we are saying the rights were taken from public so here the all power and authority of union government and governments of the constituent parts are derived from the public uh, from the people to guarantee fourth objective to guarantee and secure to all people of india okay it is clearly mentioned to all people of india uh, justice social economic political equality of status uh, status of opportunity and before law freedom of thought expression belief faith worship vocation association and action so all these freedoms we are getting uh, all these things that is the objective of constitution now fifth adequate safeguards for minorities backward and tribal areas and depressed and other backward classes so this is really essential when we are talking of word that is called as inclusive growth so the growth should penetrate to all layers of the society as we are aware that uh, prior to freedom casteism was playing a dominating role over india today also uh, it is playing not directly but indirectly people they are associated with some uh, association like caste and all that but uh, before freedom it was much more dominating and so we have to consider a person as a citizen of india none other that you belong to x caste you belong to y caste so no so that is the main objective but apart from that uh, certain people they were called as minorities and their safeguards are really essential but uh, just uh, look in the history of india have you observed ever any single battle any single war any single communal rights against certain minorities in india minorities yes india is having jewish people minority india is having parsi that is called as zoroastrian people minority like that various minorities are there and so before constitution also and before british rules also because i can ask question why jews came to india they are not indian by origin but they came here they found asylum over here and now they dissolved in indian community none of the jew in india is tortured by other person in india just because that fellow is jew that person is following some different faith than other indian is following no none of the parsi say parsi is found asylum in india from persia rather i should say from armenia the ancestors of parsis arrived here they found asylum here this is the tolerant of indian community and so uh, no additional actually safeguards are required but uh, they mention that yes safeguards for minorities ha huh. obviously uh, backward class tribal areas depressed and other backward classes yeah they are essential and uh, with that slowly actually we had to make a uniform indian community like that actually objective should be there 
now uh, to maintain a uh, six uh, objective to maintain integrity of the territory of republic this is most important thing whatever territory we got now say whatever we lost in 1945 46 47 forget of that but now whatever after 15th august 47 whatever territory we got that integrity of that uh, territory uh, and its sovereign rights on land see you are aware that every nation if it is associated with uh, coastal line then having some rights over seas and so uh, and air also according to uh, say why i am saying because in the sea there are various islands those who are the islands are in vicinity of india india is having rights certain indian islands they are far beyond india on map you can check out andaman and nicobar islands okay but we got right over that lakshadweep later on it dissolved but diego garcia diego garcia is there in the uh, indian ocean it is called as british indian ocean territory so diego garcia is not under control of india like that various islands are there why i am taking particularly name of diego garcia because you must aware you can check out information about diego garcia on map also you can check out diego garcia where american navy is there okay uh, to control third world but forget on that now so uh, we are again focusing here uh, so to maintain the integrity of the territory of the republic and its sovereign rights on land sea and air according to justice and law of civilized nations okay so uh, they are not saying advanced nation but civilized nations to secure seventh objective to secure for india its rightful and honored place in the world i am recording this video in 2023 you can check out just uh, g20 summit was there in india and whether we got this that is to secure for india its rightful and honored place in the world so right now we will feel that this objective is fulfilled we got now honored place as well as rightful because certain people they are not ready to recognize india they are calling india as yet they are calling as third world uh, especially a famous newspaper not in india but they made a famous cartoon at that time when we launched successfully mars orbital mission that is mangalyaan mission so after that they shown some cartoon that was insulting for india but within few years only the position of india is changed world is now observing you in the point that you can do something for rest of the world so this is the honored place in the world now eight this is the most important actually this should be written first but it is written last to contribute to the promotion of world peace and the welfare of mankind this should be the most important objective of our constitution that we should not only focus actually we have to focus on india but other than india we have to focus on rest of all mankind if you are going to vedic uh, references you are getting that today also we are now propagating that uh, vasudhaiva kutumbakam now uh, in various parts of world this type of thoughts are not there uh, for example in a uh, nazi germany they were having thoughts to exploit other world for the benefits of germany no no hitler was calling himself as aryan but having doubt because in rugved it is clearly mentioned krudvanto vishvam aryam that is let us make this universe noble so like that concepts are there that is in india from vedic period we are having these references so uh we want to make benefits of this all so welfare of mankind so these were the 
objectives of making constitution.